Hello and welcome to my retro watches. This is the next episode in the Seiko 6309 5000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, of course, we're now on eight and a half thousand subscribers, so clearly this uh, this watch is taking me a lot longer than I anticipated. So sorry for that. Had a few more delays again this week with work and such like. So we are now uh, looking at the case itself, and the plan of action in this video is to try and certainly restore the case as best as I can. Um, the case back, if I hold that back up to the camera, the case back is horrific. Um, it has got so many scars on it. At the moment, I am not sure what to do. I've got a few things that I can use on my polishing machine to try and buff some of those out, but there are so many that I can't be expected to get this better than just okay. So I might have to live with that. Uh, the bezel also there is I can't see it now here so there's a little dink in the bezel and that is going to be quite problematic and possibly not something I can actually remove uh, however here's the case now first of all ignore what we can see in here this is either bits of rust or old oil gunk which will come out uh, I'll scrape all that out uh, off camera and probably wash it in the, the ultrasonic but for the time being I thought there's no point really because we're going to be making it dirty. Um, the plan is to put a brushed finish on the top part here and then polish these sides and then it's got this like little bevel which is the worst part to be honest with you. Uh, trying to restore that and keep these lines is particularly diff difficult. And it's going to be extremely difficult for me on this one because of just how badly damaged it is. There's another big dink down here as well, which I won't be able to get out. So um, let's just see what we can do. Uh, I'm not going to promise anything. Um, I know the purists out there will think this is uh, the worst thing to possibly do, but hey, uh, I'm going to do it. Now, I'll quickly talk about some of the products that we're going to use. Uh, there is this Captain Tape. It's like a thermal tape uh, available on the internet and I think I've got a link to it on my website actually and this is particularly good certainly when we come to polish because we can tape off certain areas that we don't want to um, uh, get interfered with and um, it's very very um, adhesive so it sticks really really well. Uh, abrasives. These are abrasive sticks and basically all they are is wet and dry silicon carbide paper glued around sticks they've come from cousins these ones and they all have numbers which denote the various types of grades they're going to be these are particularly good for doing certain areas um, which i will be using i'll also be using the actual paper itself uh, i tend to find that doing it by hand quite good so I'm going to, I've got 400 grit I'm going to be using 320 400 600 800 uh, 1200 and 1500 quite possibly uh, and then I've also got some sort of scotch brights we've got different grades here again this is a very fine this is an ultra fine and this is a super ultra fine all of these things I'm going to use or I might not use because you never know until you get stuck into these um, exactly what you're going to need you have to sort of just feel it most of it's going to be done by hand i would normally say that i'd do it all by hand power tools generally are a bit of a no-no with exception of when we come to polish uh, where i will be using a hand tool um, however because i'm trying to see if you can see it on camera because these sides it almost looks like it's been shot blasted and i worry about that because trying to scratch that out by hand with wet and dry uh, is going to take me hours quite literally so i am going to bring in my new rotary tool that i've just bought uh, and i'm going to use a rubberized wheel now it probably goes against the grain of a lot of people um, but i've already done a test run so we've got a, another case exactly the same actually which was from the, another donor and this has got some horrendous uh, pit marks are like rust marks actually but I've used the wheel to good effect to get under some of that now okay it does look a bit odd in places uh, but that's because I've gone in different directions and once that's all polished up you wouldn't really notice at all 
Uh, so it has to be a compromise, I think. Um, I don't want to spend 10 hours trying to restore this case. Uh, I want to try and cut some corners where I can. And I do feel that doing this in a controlled manner will help me significantly. So without further ado, I'm just going to get set up, get the camera in a different position and try and record some of it. I won't record all of this because um, it, like I say, it's so laborious. Um, I just need to really go and sit, probably watch a movie <laughs> and scratch away at it with some emery cloth. Uh, the one bit that I will show you in much more detail will be the polishing because um, there are various processes in polishing which I feel is worth me uh, talking about and showing you how that is done because it's quite straightforward really um, with the right tools and certainly the right um, compounds and, and mops that you have to use. So you could learn something from that. But basically on this, it would literally be getting the paper and sanding you know all the way around here and uh, I, I won't use the the power tool on the front um, because it's got so much contour it's so rounded everywhere that you run the risk of flat spotting it somewhere so that will be done by hand it's just literally these sides just to help me get under some of it okay so we'll cut to the next um, camera position where we're going to get started okay this is a bit of an awkward camera angle, uh, but it's the only way I can kind of set up. I didn't want to do it on the bench because it makes a lot of dust and that's not a place where I want so much dust. Uh, so I've got on the end of the tool here a rubberized wheel. It's basically got some abrasive um, impregnated into this. It's uh, six mil wide and I am going to gently, and I mean gently, pass it over these areas on both sides just to try and get under. Now you'll either see how good it is or you won't. It's hard for me to look at the camera and concentrate on what I'm trying to do at the same time. Um, but I'm going to give it a go. Uh, at this point as well, if you are trying to do something like this, definitely wear eye protection. You've only got one set of eyes. I've only got one good eye as it turns out. So um, always, always, always look after your eyes, please guys, especially when using these uh, false uh, moves bit of higher pressure these can split and they can fly all over the place it's happened to me before and um, it ain't very nice so there's the safety warning so let's get started going to stop it quickly just to talk a little bit more um, so when you're using one of these as well tr you don't want to hold it in one place for too long uh, because you will get a flat spot the idea is to keep moving it and moving it try and keep away from the edge as much as you can uh, if you're keeping nice and flat you shouldn't interfere with that edge at all I can see my autofocus is going crazy um, trying to hold up to the camera what you can now see is it, it, it shining it up a bit but it's actually highlighting where all of the bad areas are going to be now as much as i want to keep showing you this um i feel i've got to do the job right and the camera is really hampering me um, so i want to do this and the other side off camera and then cut back uh, shortly and show you the results from this first wheel because i've got a few other wheels to use as well
Okay, back on the bench, and you saw me using all three wheels there, and hopefully you can see the difference. The camera is quite difficult to get it in the light. There's still some pits, but in the main, that's looking pretty good, and that has saved a considerable amount of work. Now, we are going to get some very slight rounding here and there. I think I'd get that even on hand, hand, uh, hand cleaning, hand restoring, to be honest with you, because the case is that bad. Um, but overall, I'm pleased. They won't need much more now. A few uh, goes with um, some of the Scotch Bright, and that will be getting ready for polish. So I need to do the bevel, and I will need to do the case top. Now, the next bit I will do is the case top, because before I put a brush finish on it, I've got to try and get under those scratches on there as well. And that will just mean that I've got to tape it up, uh, cover this edge, and then I'll just be going at it with some... Um, some wet and dry paper, uh, probably in front of the telly. <laughs> right, I've applied uh, some tape to the sides. That's really just to uh, prevent any slips that I might have and uh, run the risk of scratching the work I've just done. And I'm also covering up the bevel at this stage. And I mean, here's an example. So we've got some 320 grit paper and all I'll be doing is folding that up and going over the entire case it's not going to do much at the moment because I can't put pressure on but I'll need to polish all of this up go through the grades of course to start with to try and get under as much of the scratches as I can and then as much as I'm not going to be taking this back to a mirror I need to get this a really good smooth finish uh, in preparation for the um, brushing so I'm going to go away now and do that, and the next you'll see is uh, that bit uh, all done. I'm sorry I'm not showing it on camera, but it will take, I mean this part here is probably going to take me at least an hour, I would have thought. So I'll see you uh, very shortly, in a few seconds for you guys, maybe an hour or so for me. Okay, what was a few seconds for you? It was actually 24 hours. Um, I worked away on this last night for a few hours well not really a few hours probably an hour and uh, and then called it a night so um, what you can hopefully see now is the finish that we've got and it's a little bit better down here because I just wanted to quickly show you a product that I use at the end which is uh, this stuff here from Norton uh, soft touch sanding sponge um, it's 1500 to 1000 200 grit uh, but because it's spongy uh, you get um, less pressure to put on uh, so therefore it sort of acts a bit finer and I'll just try and demonstrate it very quickly on the bit here that I've not done because it's very very good stuff now I know other brands do the same type of thing not too sure whether you'd find Norton uh, it's something I sell in my day job Uh, their brand um, but whether it's out in the public domain I am unsure but I have seen other sponge like um, abrasives and it just means that you get an even pressure and it's good for these finishing jobs so already we can see that that's starting to shine a bit more now that's all I want to do is just get this so that I'm um happy that there isn't too many scratches because because we're putting brush finish on this that does cover up some um, blemishes uh, because the polished surface always shows everything now we do have i'm not sure if you can see that on the light here some slight pitting just here i can't get rid of that for me to sand underneath that uh, would take a long time and um, I'm not sure whether I could really get completely under it. So I need to, to finish that off, uh, but I'll then also use this on the sides. Uh, but what I wanted to then look at was these bezels. So I'm just going to remove this tape and then we'll see what we can do. Did I say bezels? I mean the bevels. So um, let's see what we can do with those. Okay, now the tape is off. Um, as you can see, we've got that big 
dent there which is, is really not appealing now the problem you've got with these obviously it's an angle and this is where the sticks do come in because you can kind of with your eye see the angle and then therefore try and follow it follow the line now that is going to take again a lot of time uh, to get right and try and get those buffed up as best we can um, it will be a case of trying to start with one of these coarser sticks and trying to bring them down slowly and steadily this is the hardest part uh, by a long way it's a shame there isn't a machine that could do this uh, for the home user I know there is for the professionals they can use a lapping wheel on a machine and a little jig and um, spin this around following a, an abrasive wheel and just put that back on uh, within a matter of minutes uh, but for somebody like me who hasn't got the the, um, the right equipment it is just sheer perseverance and trying to do it uh, like this away from my eyes is not too good either so I'm going to just try and do this and I'll cut back shortly with a progress report okay so I've been at it for another 20 minutes or so on these um, bevels and I've roughed them out there is some still with some marks on them what I've actually found I don't know if I'll be able to show you this really is if I hold the case kind of like this and I can get the angle right with my stick and then it's a case of almost just filing really and I'm on a very rough one at the moment but that does seem to keep the contours quite well um, so I now just have to go over with them with all the other sticks and any blemishes that are going to stay will stay some of them might actually polish out when we get to the polishing stage so um, sorry to keep chopping and changing but this is very very time consuming um, so I just need to knuckle down now really and try and get those a little bit better right then a bit more time has been spent and we are getting somewhere on these now um, never too sure how they come out on camera but they're looking a lot better and almost pre-polishing stage so the idea with this is now is to try and blend as much as this down as I can to the smoothest possible surface because uh, polishing will show anything that you've got wrong uh, and it always shows it at the last minute and usually that means you've got to start um, quite a few grades back again to try and bring it back so I will have to uh, keep using the wet and dry papers and probably now uh, more of this and uh, some of the scotch bright at that point as well and we'll get it right down and um, we can then be ready to put the brush on because I'll be putting the brush on first on the top here uh, before I start polishing and then it'll be a bit of a cat and mouse game because um, as much as I can brush this and tape it off uh, even in polishing you sometimes get a slight overlap and then you've got to sort of tape up the polishing and do the brushing again so it'll be a bit of back and forth however um, it's starting to take shape now and uh, I can start um, thinking that the end result is going to be quite pleasing uh, so I'm going to persevere again for now just uh, trying to sand this a bit further down hopefully I'll show you that uh, at the end result and then we can get prepped and ready for the next part right then here we are uh, a little while later and I've gone over the whole case uh, with some very fine or ultra fine uh, scotch bright type material and it's now at a position where I think it's ready for polishing uh, the polishing will take place I think now in another video uh, because uh, that's going to take quite a lot of time as well um, so there we are you can see what we've done so far got this to a fairly decent finish or as best as I think it's going to be uh, and removed a lot of the historical scratches which weren't sympathetic on this case this case had been treated um, 
really badly. So um, I'm only doing it justice as far as I'm concerned. Um, so before I uh, close this video off, I wanted to have a look at the bezel. Uh, in part because I will look at the case back probably in the next video as well because I need to have a little bit more of a think about how to uh, how to try and make that pretty reasonable. However the bezel will need polishing and I need to prep that before polishing so uh, the idea will be to use some wet and dry on this top surface so the top surface here is the one that's got some of the marks in. Now I've had a quick look and a quick scratch around and there is quite a lot of uh, marks on it which I don't like um, so I will try and remove some of those and I'm going to show you uh, right now how I do that. Right so what you can see in front of you is a piece of steel, tool steel and this has been surface ground. Uh, it's an industrial or a, a, um, an engineering steel so this is ground nice and flat it's actually a product again that I sell in my day job and this is a little offcut uh, which I use in my watchmaking. Now because I know it's a good flat surface it is a good uh, base uh, to put wet and dry around. Uh, now I'm going to start off with uh, an 800 grit and I'm going to wrap the paper around the steel and try to make sure it is as flat as it can be and that then gives me a good guide. Now it is a little bit loose, ideally it would be nice to glue these down uh, but from experience it should be okay. Um, and all I'm going to do is offer up the bezel like so and I'm going to probably hold it with my fingers and just move it around on that flat surface trying to apply even pressure as I go and circular motions generally keep it pretty consistent. Now we've just done a few there we're not going to see much on camera I don't feel uh, but the idea will be for me to try let's try and take an example so we've got some little dinks here uh, we'll try and get under those with a bit of persuasion uh, doing it this method. Then that was uh, three minutes on that sandpaper, and um, you can see that it's starting to improve. But it's going to need quite a lot more work, and it'll need then the next few grades up. So from P800 to 1200, and then 1500, which is the finest I've got, and then I'll hit it with again with the Scotch Bright. So I'm going to persevere with this. Um, this mark again, I'm, uh, it's too deep, but if we can try and get under some of the other ones, maybe this one we can make a bit better, um, I'll be happy. So I'm going to, again, do that uh, now off the camera, and um, we'll see how long that's going to take. Okay, here we go then. So I actually found that pushing the uh, bezel back into the case and sanding it in the case gave me a, a lot easier purchase so I've learnt a little thing along the way I haven't done too many bezels it has to be said but putting it back in like that has made it a lot easier to do uh, and again we still have this I really am tempted to try and get it out because uh, it would look really nice but even feeling that 
that's still probably another 0.2 of a millimeter I would think and that's quite a lot in uh, it, well to remove by hand uh, the good thing is if you look around and again it's hard for me to see how this is on camera uh, that has got rid of all the other dinks there's a bit of dirt here and there of course um, so overall I'm quite pleased uh, and it's about ready to polish I've just got to do a bit of final sanding on that one uh, but I wanted to call it a day on this particular part of the video um, because Otherwise, it's going to go on forever because polishing will be equally as long. I can promise you that. So we'll do it in two stages. We'll have this one and then the, the polishing finishing video uh, coming very shortly with the brushed and how to do the sides. Um, so let's uh, finish it there. So, you know, thanks very much for watching. I hope you uh, found this interesting and uh, we are at least making progress on this uh, giveaway watch. Um, Please join me in the Facebook groups. I've mentioned them many times before and there are links down below. Uh, be great to see you in there, uh, participating and joining all the, all the fun. Uh, I've also got an Instagram account, my retro watches. How about follow me on Instagram? Um, that would be nice. I've got nothing else to promote. <laughs> so uh, like I say, the next video is gonna be uh, very, very shortly because I'm just gonna continue with this one uh, until we get the whole case finished. So we can move on to the final part to give it away. That's the most important thing now. Um, so again, thanks very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one very soon, I promise. Bye for now.